All right, hello and welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 106. Uh, sorry, I did not record last week. It's been two weeks since I recorded. Decided to give myself a little break after the Super Bowl. You know, recording every week during football season is a little bit of a grind. Um, and just wanted to give myself a, a moment to regroup, but I am back here. Um, like I said last time, I'm not sure what my football offseason schedule is going to look like. It'll probably depend on what's going on with the Cavs, um, especially as we get into playoffs, and then just what is happening for the Browns during the offseason, what relevant stuff is going on. Sometimes it gets hard during that football offseason, you know, where there's just no news. Uh, we have a couple weeks away till free agency, and then you wait a couple more weeks until you have the draft. Um, so it gets it gets tough in certain moments. Luckily, we have a little bit to talk about today, um, but it's, you know, a lot of speculation is uh, this current time, which is Browns fans' favorite time of year is just speculating and uh, thinking of things that probably aren't going to happen. Or, you know, looking through draft picks and then remembering that Andrew Barry loves to trade down and get additional picks for maybe even future years. Uh, and it won't even be relevant for the picks that you were looking at in the first place. So um, it's all fun, though. It's part of what I think is so great about football is that you get excited about every step of the process, which I feel like it just happens more in football than other sports. Like, sure, I get excited about the NBA draft, but digging into um, NFL prospects and just putting all the pieces together of the team in the offseason is pretty fun to do in football for sure. So uh, we'll definitely do that over the coming weeks, but um, have a little bit of Browns news to talk about today with uh, the Browns finally firing Mike Prefer and hiring their new special teams coordinator. I'm going to touch on the Super Bowl briefly, um, just because I didn't get to talk about it last week. Uh, and then definitely some NBA stuff I want to just touch on All-Star Weekend Kevin Love is gone. He is now with the Miami Heat, sad. Um, and then just some general Cavs stuff of where we're at right now. All-Star break is over. Where are we going forward? What is the rest of the season gonna look like? Um, and we will get into all of that. So let's just start off with the Super Bowl. Um, so I don't wanna get into it too much because obviously it's it's so far in the distance now, like even like, you know, a week away is like, oh, who won the Super Bowl this past year? Um, no, but uh, I did, you know, do pretty well on some of my predictions. I said the Chiefs are going to win because I can never doubt Patrick Mahomes. That was a correct statement, which is interesting because it wasn't even like Patrick Mahomes was some incredible quarterback in that game. Like Jalen Hurts had an awesome game too, but it was just like, I don't know, that guy is going to find a way to win the game no matter what. Uh, and that's what happened. I also hit three of the four bets that I gave you guys. Travis Kelsey, anytime touchdown, that's money every time. Like every playoff game, it's like, yeah, he's scoring. It's You're going to be good there. Um, Patrick Mahomes, MVP, was right on that. You know, figured if the Chiefs win, he's win that. And then my Chiefs future obviously hit as well. Um, the only one I missed on was the Dallas Goddard TD, which was a bummer, but um, three of four is pretty good. I've been doing better on my bets lately. I I took a little break after the Super Bowl because I was doing a lot of NFL playoff bets, um, but I think I'm getting smarter with my bets. And I started at the beginning when you had all of the free money. I was doing all of those parlays and whatnot, which uh, you can start losing pretty quick on those. So uh, I've tried to do some more singular bets to make it a little bit easier, um, but it's been fun. So I'll definitely uh, have to, as I you know finish up my break after Super Bowl, get into some more NBA bets as we go on. It's hard because I don't necessarily want to bet on the Cavs because in some ways it makes it less fun for me when I watch them because we could have an incredible game like everyone does really well but like I miss you know a parlay by one point from Donovan Mitchell and then I'm all mad after I don't want to be mad after a Cavs win I want to feel good after a Cavs win um so uh, I'll definitely throw some out there but ones that aren't going to uh upset me as much when they don't work out uh in in the game so I can make sure I still enjoy uh the teams in my city um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Super Bowl. Like it was a really good game. I enjoyed watching it. Rihanna was awesome. Um, and you know, I think the biggest takeaway is the best teams in this league have great quarterbacks and they're great in the trenches and, uh, that's what you need to win games. And it felt like that was the case. I think the other big takeaway is that like running the ball is important. Both teams 
Um, you know, even the Chiefs, who weren't supposed to have the capability to run the ball, ran the ball really well, but it wasn't by paying a big time running back, which Look, you know I love Nick Chubb, and I think he's a great asset for the Browns. Um, but it's interesting the way uh, teams are forming where they're finding these young uh, running backs who, you know, don't have a lot of mileage on them, uh, who are producing for them at the end of the day still, but they don't have to spend all this money on them. Um, so it's just uh, kind of an interesting scenario that you're looking at on what's the best way to build a team, um, you know, going forward. Uh, so... That was uh, interesting to watch. Like um, that, what's his name? Isaiah Pacheco, I think is how you say his name. Um, he was incredible for the Chiefs. Like literally like a bowling ball going through uh, the field there. It was pretty incredible to watch. And obviously, you know, young guy, not a lot of experience, but he made it happen on the biggest of stages. So uh, just something to think about, I think, in the future. Um, okay, so other NFL news. Like I said, Browns fired Mike Prefer, which... Didn't know if that was coming or not. I think if everyone remembers from when Kevin Stefanski spoke right after the season ended, he was very non-committal about what was going to happen with Prefer. Um, and look, Prefer is Stefanski's guy. Like they have been together. That is his dude um, that he, you know, really wanted here. Uh, so it's, I think it's harder to fire your friends than people think. I think he was friends with Joe Woods too, and uh, it's probably tough, tough to do, but that's part of the business. And I think it shows um, how much Kevin wants to win is, is that if he sees an upgrade, he's willing to do that. And he did that in this case. I think, you know, at first I was a little confused on the timing because I'm like, okay, it's been what, six weeks since the season ended. That's a little bit weird. Um, but once the speculation about who they were going to hire started coming out, it made a little bit more sense. Uh, so they hired Bubba Ventrone, who was the Colts special teams coordinator uh, prior to this. And uh, he actually played special teams for the Browns previously, which is, you know, you love that hometown connection. It just feels a little bit better if they have that connection to Cleveland in some way. Um, but it seems like once Stefanski realized that he was available, that's when he made the move. He wasn't gonna just fire Prefer for the sake of firing him. He was gonna wait to see if he was gonna be able to upgrade in any way, which I think makes sense at the end of the day. Um, look, like I don't think a special teams coordinator changes everything for a team. Um, it's not going to take us from where we are to contending for the Super Bowl, you need a million other things to happen in order for that to be the case. But um, I do think just a new voice in that room and, and changes to be made is important. Like, I just think after what happened last season with the Jets game and the collapse in that, in large part due to some special teams mistakes, also defensive mistakes, but also special teams, um, I think someone needed to get the boot for that and it was going to be prefer in this case our special teams wasn't awful overall this year like we we were okay when it came to returning um had some really bright moments with that uh but there were certainly some errors um there were some you know kicking errors as well so i think it was the right move to get a new voice in there if you're replacing the dc maybe just do it all at once um, and make those upgrades where you see fit and then, you know, move forward. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. I think um, it's exciting that we have good coaches that want to come to Cleveland. I think that says a lot more about Kevin Stefanski than people realize. Um, like Jim Schwartz wanting to come here. Um, Bubba, who he was, you know, he, he's technically getting a promotion in Cleveland. So he was a special teams coordinator there. Here he is special teams coordinator and assistant head coach, which I think that's just more of a formality that they did because uh, in order for him to interview in Cleveland, he would need to be getting a promotion. Otherwise, the Colts would have had an opportunity to block that interview. Um, and the Browns probably did not want that to happen. So in order to do that, they made uh, a technical promotion, which um, I believe that Prefer had that similar title of assistant head coach. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he did. Uh, so I, I don't think it's like a crazy thing, some conspiracy that he's coming in to replace Kevin, uh, like some people like to think, but um, I think it's good that he wanted to be here. Um, and I, I think it just shows that 
Kevin is respected more across the league than maybe the fans give him credit for. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Like I said, a million more things need to happen. This is not a solve to be like, oh, we got Schwartz and we got Bubba Ventrone. Like, we're all good now. Uh, season is saved. We're a playoff team. Like, we have holes that need to be filled, obviously, through free agency and the, and the draft. So those things still need to happen in order for us to move forward and really be a, a consistent playoff team. Okay, so that is all the Browns news um, and NFL stuff. Let's get into All-Star Weekend for the NBA. So I didn't watch everything. Um, I watched a lot of the dunk contest, which was super fun. I, I feel like that was like my childhood was watching the dunk contest. I remember with my siblings, we used to like do our own dunks on the like little plastic um, uh, hoops that you put on the door. Uh, and we would, you know, put on a, a jersey and do some what we probably thought were the coolest dunks ever. Uh, they probably weren't, but um, it was just always fun as a kid and something we looked forward to. So I thought it was really cool that it was super fun again this year. And I enjoyed watching that look like the whole weekend of stuff is not you know, the most elite basketball ever that we're watching. And it's not really supposed to be. Um, like, I know the All-Star game is not good basketball, right? I'm not expecting it to be good basketball, though. I feel like people get so mad about it not being good and, like, no one's trying defensively. It's just basically a dunk contest back and forth. It's just, that's just how it is. I, it's not going to change. I don't know what they could do to it to make it any better because... Guys are just smarter with trying to avoid injury. They don't want to do anything that's going to potentially hurt themselves. Um, so that's just kind of how that game goes. And I don't get too bent out of shape out of it because it's just, I know I know what it is. It is what it is. And that's that's just okay sometimes. Not everything needs to be like the best and most, you know, the greatest thing in the entire world. Um, the only other takeaway I had is that LeBron didn't choose Donovan Mitchell for his team when they did the draft, which was, it was interesting that they did the live draft. I, I'm not sure. I think I liked it. I f feel like it was interesting, added something different, but I was disappointed he didn't draft to Donovan because of course I would use that opportunity to make every conclusion in the world that that means LeBron is coming back to Cleveland, just as I did last year when he drafted Darius, like I, I, and, and Jarrett. So I, I wanted to do that again this year and didn't get the opportunity. So thanks for nothing, LeBron. <laughs> I wish you would have drafted drafted our guy. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is Kevin Love. So obviously, Kevin Love is no longer on the Cavs. He is now with the Miami Heat. He um, did a buyout with the Cavs, and that was the destination he ended up choosing, which... You know, it's bittersweet. I think it was something that the Cavs probably needed to do um, if they weren't going to trade him, which, you know, I don't know if they tried to, what kind of effort was put into that, but uh, obviously that did not happen. So Kevin Love was not going to be in the rotation at this point in time, just based on how everything has been going uh, and how he's been performing. So I think in order to respect him and his, what, nine years in Cleveland, that was, they did him a solid by giving him that that choice to go where he wanted to go. Um, I get the people who say like, why would you do that? Um, you know, you are giving a potential like who could, you know, make some shots for a playoff team that you're going to be facing in the playoffs. Why would you do that? But um, I think they just wanted to do it out of respect for him. So I understand both sides of it. I'm not as worried as as a lot of people are that like Kevin Love's just gonna go off on us in the playoffs. Like Bill Simmons had some tweets that he just felt like this was a horrible decision for the Cavs and it was gonna come back to bite them. I don't know if I feel like that strongly about it, but um, I do think like he could potentially find some success in you know the rotation in Miami. Um, so we'll see if we end up facing him in the playoffs. I, it's so tight in the East right now. Like I don't know if we're gonna end up playing the Knicks the Nets or the Heat, like it could be any of them really. So we'll we'll see how things uh, shake out, but it would be kind of sad if we had to face him in the playoffs. That would feel uh, definitely weird because he's been with us for so long at this point in time. It's pretty crazy um, the career he's had in Cleveland and the amount of time has been, he has been here, um, which kind of leads me to the impact I feel like Kevin Love has had on me, on Cleveland, um, through 
not just what he did on the court, but off the court with his journey to speaking about his mental health struggles, um, being very candid and honest about what he was going through uh, and how he was working to correct that and, you know, make changes in his life so that it, you know, was a little bit better for him. And I have to say for myself, like that, him telling his story like that impacted me very, very personally. I, you know, I've talked openly on here about um, the anxiety that I have dealt with over the years uh, and, you know, different mental health struggles that come along with that. And this past summer, I was at an all time high of anxiety where I was, I was at the lowest I had been in terms of just feeling in and out that anxiety every day. I wasn't able to sleep very well and it was a struggle and for the first time in my life I had had a panic attack which had never been something that had been a part of my anxiety or my mental health journey and it was pretty terrifying and when that happened a couple hours later after I calmed in and settled down the first thing that I thought of was Kevin Love's article I'd read it years before I had thought wow that's so crazy he's sh you know sharing this story that's awesome um, and you know related on the anxiety level but didn't understand the panic attack on that level that day I read that article over 50 50 times I just kept reading it and reading it and reading it and didn't stop reading it because exactly what was happening to him in that moment is the same exact thing that was happening to me and it was the first thing where I was like okay take a breath like you're okay. Kevin Love was okay. Kevin Love is a very successful person. He is living a full life. He's happy. He has friends. He is successful at his job. And he's also going through this same exact struggle that you're going through. So you're going to be okay too. Um, and I, I think sometimes people are like, oh, people talk about mental health so much. Why is everyone always talking about it? Um, why does every famous person have to tell their story? It is so valuable for so many people to hear those stories. And I don't think I realized it until that moment where I was just searching for something to comfort me and make me feel like what happened was okay. Um, and I, I look to sports for everything. Like I know there's a million famous people that have probably told similar stories, but sports are the first thing I look to in every avenue of my life, really. So this was a, another opportunity where that is what I was looking to. And Kevin Love came to mind as, you know, the major athlete in my city who was uh, discussing what they were going through. And uh, it was it was so important to me. And I really, I thank him for that. Um, I know it's helped so many people. I've talked to so many other people who have had similar experiences and just knowing um, someone with that level of success and living such a full life also struggles, I think is important. Um, Cause look, it's, it's fine for people to just tell you like, oh, you're gonna be okay, it'll be fine. Um, but to read someone's story of their journey to becoming more okay after going through it you know word for word all of the details i think it means a lot and it was really brave of him to share that so um all the respect in the world for kevin love i appreciate him i appreciate his nine years in cleveland i will be booing kelly olenic for the rest of time as long as he is in this league he will be hearing my boos um because we will defend Kevin Love till the end of time in Cleveland and his jersey will certainly be up in the rafters someday. So I am um, happy for him for that. Who knows how many years he has left in his career? Like, I don't know what his plans are. He's what, 35 years old, I think. So he's definitely up there um, where I don't know how much longer he plans on playing, but um, whenever he retires, I'm sure like I said, his jersey will be in the rafters and he's welcome back for anything in Cleveland at any point in time. The uh, the last thing I'll say about him is it's interesting, like throughout his entire career uh, on the Cavs, he never quite, like I feel like had, got to f like fulfill everything that he could be as a player. Like, look, he came to play with LeBron and Kyrie and he had to adjust his game multiple times uh, to kind of figure out where he fits on that team. Fans constantly putting him in trade rumors, media putting him in trade rumors, um, speculation about him when he was like injured on, does Kevin Love even care about playing basketball anymore? Does Kevin Love care about this team? Um, going through the 
transformation to becoming a veteran who's coming off the bench after being an all-star and starting for his team every single game, going through that mentally and being able to adjust and, and let the younger players start to take over. Um, and especially doing that last season where he was such an instrumental part of the team coming off the bench and he did it with such grace. Um, I really, really respect that. And I'm disappointed it ended like this. I feel like, you know, once his career's over, he'll sign like a 10 day and we'll, you know, be able to give him maybe a better send off because this was just like a weird way to go out. But at the same time, um, it's just kind of how it needed to go. And I, I think there's there's all love there in general between Cleveland and Kevin Love, like no, no bad blood from that. So uh, definitely uh, wish the best for him unless we play him in the playoffs and you're going down, Kevin, not, not your series. Sorry, buddy. Um, and he better not take a charge against us. I, I can't, I can't deal with that. Like we, you take charges for us. Okay. Not for, not for Miami. So let's, let's cut that out if uh, we get you in a series, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so a little more Cavs talk here. So as we um, get into the remaining, what do we have? Two, two-ish months left of the season. It's kind of around that point, maybe two and a half. Um, it's, it's starting to round out. It's weird after the All-Star break how quickly everything goes, um, but I'm starting to kind of think about uh, where things are landing and, and starting to prepare for the playoffs. Um, I'm recording this just after we lost to the Nuggets by, I think it was six points it ended up being, which was unfortunate. Um, look, there wasn't a lot like to say about the game because I felt like it was it's the first game after the All-Star break. You look a little rusty at first, but I will say Evan Mobley did not look rusty. He had 31 points. His offensive game has just come such a long way. He looked incredible. I was um, just... I was in awe of him, honestly, because I feel like he keeps taking another little baby step each time I see him, um, and it's really fun to see. So I, I felt like that was a really uh, big game for him, especially coming right after the All-Star break, but um, disappointed we couldn't get the win. That was definitely a bummer. Um, but when looking at our current roster, as we start to think about playoffs, you obviously don't play as deep of a rotation once you get into the playoffs. Um, and I think they're gonna have to start as we move along here, narrowing down what that's gonna look like. I felt like it was interesting tonight. They played Lamar a ton, which was a bit surprising. Um, I I don't think that once we get to playoffs, I'm not assuming that we're gonna see a lot of Lamar Stevens. You know, he had a couple good moments, I feel like, and you guys know I love Lamar more than uh, any fan out there, and I, I love his game, but um, I just don't know how much I see him getting within this rotation. I see, obviously, the starting five, DG, Donovan, Evan, Jarrett, and Isaac. And then off the bench, I think it'll end up being Karis, Ricky, and Dean. So those eight total, really getting the vast majority of the minutes, really being a part of the regular rotation in the playoffs. Now, if someone gets injured or is having a horrible game, Maybe if you need a spark, you get some jetty minutes. Um, I think that could be a possibility. I think if you need, you know, maybe in a really close game towards the end, you need some defense and you need to, you know, sub someone out for that. Maybe you put in Lamar for a little bit just to get his um, defense out there, but I don't see him getting regular minutes, like I said, in the playoffs. But I don't think there's anyone else that I would put in the regular rotation, obviously barring injuries, which, uh, God forbid, I hope those don't happen. Um, you play those smaller groups of players. So, um, you know, we're going to need especially Karis and Dean to be able to step up. Um, and even in the starting lineup, like I'm, I'm still worried about what Isaac is going to end up being. Um, in the playoffs. I think he's been pretty good for this team lately, but teams are going to try to exploit him in the playoffs and he's going to need to continue to at least be able to shoot at a decent level and, uh, you know, continue to play well defensively. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm assuming those eight is what my projection is for this playoff roster. Um, so the East rankings right now, we have Celtics one, Bucks two, Sixers three, and then Cavs at four. Behind us, then, we have the Nets, who are two and a half games back from us, the Knicks, who are four and a half games back from us, and the Heat, who are five games back from us. 
I think which that was, I wrote those stats down before tonight, so it might slightly change a little bit after our loss tonight. Um, but in general, I feel pretty comfortable with us ending up in at least the four spot. Um, just with the distance we have from those other teams and based on our remaining schedule, I feel pretty good about us sticking in the four spot. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to catch the Sixers. Um, it would be great if we were able to, uh, but at the same time, I'm not too caught up in it because I'm more just concerned about what our matchup is going to be in the playoffs and not so much what our seed is going to be um, in the playoffs because I don't really want to play the Heat. I feel like they're a tough matchup for us in that first round. I would rather play the Knicks or the Nets. Uh, so I don't know what seed that's going to end up being that we need to play one of those two. I think I'd most want to play the Knicks and then um, the Nets after that. I feel like the Nets still have some scrappiness in them, um, but I think the Knicks are a team I would more like to play. The only thing that worries me a little about the, about the Knicks is uh, playoff atmosphere in, in Madison Square Garden. I feel like it'll be intense for that young group, uh, but... At the same time, you can't just, you know, focus on environment because all of the away environments are going to be hard and Rocket Mortgage will obviously go crazy for them when we're at home, hopefully getting home court advantage in that case. Uh, so we'll see how it all shakes out. I'm not trying to get too hung up on which seed. Like I said, matchups are more important to me in general. Um, so it, it, the other thing I wanted to say about standings is it's so interesting how much better record wise the teams are in the east and the west i know some some players have flipped after the trade deadline we had you know kevin durant and kyrie both go out west so it does change you know some of the dynamics in general but it's crazy that like the grizzlies have been struggling here and there and they're still second in the west with 35 wins like the west four seed is the clippers they would be the eight seed if they were in the east which is insane to say because in the West, they have home court advantage if they, you know, playoffs were to happen right now. In the East, they would be a play-in team. Like, that's a wild difference to have uh, between the two. So it's kind of annoying, a little bit frustrating sometimes, but it is what it is. It's gonna be, we can't, you know, complain about it because that's what the hand we are dealt, that is what we have. And look, next year, like, who knows with what happens in the playoffs, how teams change and evolve. Like, player movement is so common these days that, like, if the 76ers lose again in the second round, they could blow up the entire team um, and something crazy could happen there. Uh, you know, you just never know what's going to happen in any given offseason. So the East won't be like this forever, hopefully, knock on wood. Uh, but it's just interesting to look at the records and the dynamics right now. Um, and the Nuggets are who we play tonight are, you know, the top team in the West, which is pretty fascinating because they have like a decent gap now between them and the Grizzlies who are in second. And I'm just like, wow, I feel like there are maybe even like three teams in the East who are better than the Nuggets. I would say Boston and Milwaukee definitely are and possibly even the 76ers. I don't know if I would say that, but maybe even the 76ers. So it's just uh, interesting to look at the difference. All right, so that is all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you so much for listening. Like I said, I'll kind of figure out the schedule as I go along. I know it was very regimented during football season and consistent episodes every week on pretty much the same day, but um, it gets a little bit harder in the off season. So we will see how it goes. But if you are subscribed, you will always know when a new episode is out because it'll show up on your feed. So that's how you solve all the problems of not knowing when I'm going to be recording is you just subscribe and then you're good to go. Nothing to worry about. Um, but if you could also leave a review or rating, that would be great. Share with a friend, share with a fellow Browns fan, a fellow Cavs fan, all of that good stuff. I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I hope you have a great week. We're getting to spring. Winter is almost over. Just keep pushing through. We will get there. Appreciate you all. Go Cavs and go Browns.